All right, welcome back to lesson number two. This is called the unauthorized practice of law, all right? And the penalties that can be associated with holding yourself out as an attorney. So anyone engaged in the practice of law without a license actually is committing a criminal act. And they really like to go after agents, all right? The Indiana Bar Association loves to go out and chase agents for practicing law. One of the things that I always say is, I am not a practicing attorney, but here's what I think. And you guys should get used to practicing that. You want to make sure that none of the statements that you make to your client can be construed as practicing law. So if you are found guilty of practicing law, you actually can be convicted of a criminal crime for that, and you could potentially face jail or prison time. Now, if you don't know the difference, you might want to look those up, but jail is typically local. Prison is going to be your sin being sent to the big house, all right? You can be charged with either the misdemeanor, or you can actually be charged with a felony either way, depending on to what extent you were practicing or what problems you may have caused. If you are convicted of a misdemeanor, you can serve up to one year in the county jail, all right? Now, I don't know if that seems like a long time, but if you remember back a few months ago during that COVID-19 stay at home, I was home for six weeks and ready to pull my friggin' hair out. And that, and I live in a 4,500 square foot house. Imagine doing one year in a six by 12 foot jail. So if nothing else, <laughs> that should have <laughs> helped you decide not to practice law. If you're convicted of a felony during the unauthorized practice of law, you can actually serve up to five years in some states. I'm not sure what the crime is here in Indiana, mainly because I haven't looked, but I know damn well I don't care what it is. I don't want to serve it, all right? So please, please, please let me uh, emphasize do not practice law. On top of being incarcerated, you can actually be fined through a civil court for practicing law. You can be fined up to $1,000 if it's a misdemeanor on top of going to jail or up to $5,000 for a felony on top of going to jail. So not only do you potentially serve time, you're going to pay a fine for that. Now, that is just the civil and criminal courts. There's also the administrative issues that you have to deal with and the administrative law, which is handed down to the Professional Licensing Association, which created the Real Estate Commission, which created Title 876, called the IAC rules, which dictate that you is a potential viola violation for practicing law. Article 13 expressly states in the NAR's Code of Ethics, Realtors shall not engage in any activities that constitute the unauthorized practice of law and shall recommend that legal counsel be obtained when the interest of any party to the transaction requires it. I read it to you, and I'm not a big fan of reading stuff, but I read it to you so that you can plainly see how plain and straightforward they are about the penalties that can be associated with the unauthorized practice of law. So let's give us a little history of this. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, hey, so if we're not allowed to practice law, how are we writing these contracts anyway? Good point. One of the things I stressed, and if I had you in the 90-hour course, you remember this. This is one of those words that we say all the time that we really don't mean, and clients say it. I have said it. You said it. Hey, I got to go write a purchase contract tonight. Well, really, we're not. We're going to fill in a 27 blanks in a pre-printed form that was written by an attorney, but we are, in fact, not an attorney. Back in July of 1963, the Indiana Bar Association actually sued the Indiana Association of Realtors, 
claiming that we were in fact practicing law by filling in these what they called sales contracts, which we now call purchase agreement or purchase contracts. And basically, the Indiana Bar Association brought the complaint against the IAR stating that filling in blanks was a form of practicing real estate law. So this court case went all the way up to the Indiana Supreme Court where it was decided, ironically, by a bunch of attorneys who are, you call a judge, they actually decided that the filling in of blanks on a legal instrument that was actually prepared by an attorney only require the sufficient knowledge to understand the information is in fact not practicing law. So the fact that we only have a sufficient amount of information that we use in filling in our blanks was construed as not practicing law. So we actually have court precedents that reveals that we are in fact not practicing law because we are filling in blanks. You cannot write a contract unless, of course, you are a practicing an attorney. And then if you are, I'll slow down a little for you so you can keep up. Otherwise, we're just filling in blanks. So you need to be very careful when your client says, hey, I've decided I want to lease my property. Can you help me on that? And people go, oh, yeah, I, I'll go out and I'll write you a lease. I can do that. Man, that's practicing law. Oh, well, what about a land contract? Can I go out and write a land contract uh, for my client? No. That too is practicing law. You have to stick to the forms. If your client requires something other than one of our basic forms, you must in fact suggest that they seek out legal counsel to fulfill whatever they need, whether it's a lease, whether it's a land contract, Whatever it is, you cannot be writing it, all right? So here's the skill for you I want you to practice. Practice saying, I am not a practicing attorney, but say that in the mirror. Practice it on your way to, uh, to the office tomorrow. Hey, do it in different languages. Hey, I'm not a practicing attorney, but. Hey, man, I'm not a practicing attorney, but. Do things like that because you better get used to saying that so you don't get yourself in trouble and your managing broker. I tell everybody, hey, man, I'm not a practicing attorney, but I did sleep in a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> so here's what I need you to learn. I want to make sure you learn that the unauthorized practice of law is illegal. All right. You can be fined and imprisoned for violating that. It is also an unethical practice, according to the National Association of Realtors. So you can be brought up on administrative rules as well, which means you could potentially lose your license. So not only could you be incarcerated and fined, you might lose your license for doing this. And lastly, it's just not smart, all right? You want to make sure your client gets the best deal, Dude, that's going to may involve somebody way smarter than us in the law so that you would engage them to make sure your client gets the best service, all right? You get started talking about zoning laws or an environmental issue um, or contract law, and I'm sure you guys have seen this old contract law clause uh, statement where they go, let's see if we can do this. Uh, and I said, if you've done your 90 hours with me, you know you've seen this. Let's eat, Grandma. That is a whole different statement when you do this. Let's eat, Grandma. All right? So that punctuation can literally change what is involved in that sentence. That first sentence was a invitation. Let's eat, Grandma. That second sentence without a comma now becomes premeditated murder, all right? So don't practice law, not a good thing, it's illegal, and it's not smart on your part, all right? Hey, thank you for sticking through lesson number two.